and welcome back to my channel she talk systems this is the place where you can come to learn all about how you can use ClickUp and absado to better and improve your processes if you are here for the first time a warm welcome be sure to subscribe and drop a like on this video if you are enjoying what you see today's video i'm going to walk you through three ways where you can build sops standard operating procedures inside of ClickUp. So if this is an element that you are currently working on inside of your business, then definitely stay tuned because this video is for you. So for today's video, as I said, we are going to cover the topic of SOPs, standard operating procedures in your business. And I'm going to share three ways where you can implement these inside of ClickUp. And this is going to help you to see different methods that you can actually utilize. And you can test this out to see what actually works best with your team. So just a quick breakdown so you know exactly what we're going to cover in today's video. We're going to first of all just cover what is an SOP and why you need them in your business. I'm going to walk you through how you can create these SOPs with the use of ClickUp and also we'll just touch on who should be creating and managing the SOPs in your business. So who should actually be taking charge of those behind the scenes in your business? So first of all, what is an SOP? So SOP is a standard standard operating procedure and this essentially is your way of how you do things in your business. Now every business has its own way of operating and getting things done whether that's client work, whether that's what you do internally, how you manage new team members coming on board, there are always different elements of how you will conduct that process and what the steps are that you need to ensure that this is the standard way for your business, for your company. An SOP is that process documented. So this is the structured way and it's a way for you to actually train and help your team to work. So everyone is actually working a lot more aligned within your business and it will be more in line with your values and how you like to get things done, how your business actually needs to get things done. So your SOP should really match up to the standards of what you're promising your clients and how you're saying that you deliver and work in your business. Your SOP is what will allow your team to actually deliver the work, to do things consistently at the consistently high standards. So this is why we call them standard operating procedures. If you've ever heard that phrase, what's the procedure? How do we do this? That's really what we're asking for. We're asking for the SOP. So we shorten it down, we abbreviate it. But if you ever see this phrase flying around in the online space, that's exactly what it means. And the whole reason that we do need SOPs and that you should really be considering building these out in your business if you haven't already is because these essentially take you the business owner from the day to day it eliminates the questions that can come at you from your team members asking for next steps asking for clarification on tasks or areas of the business that really should be passed down to your team and this is a great way for you to make your company more systemized so it means that even if your team members leave even if people leave your company you still know exactly how things are getting done in your business and it's much easier if you bring on a new person you can easily use your SOP to train them but someone should always be keeping an eye and managing these processes just to ensure that they stay up to date as your business evolves and as you do things in your business so if anything changes the SOP needs to change. So let's dive into the meat of this video we're going to talk about how you can create SOPs inside of ClickUp and I'm going to take you behind the scenes of my own ClickUp I have three ways in which you can definitely implement SOPs and one of the questions you might ask during this video is is it actually wise to keep your SOPs or store them inside of ClickUp and I'm going to share my answer to that later on in this video as well so let's do a bit of a screen share with you guys all right, so I've got my two screens set up here. So I'm just going to walk you through the first way where you can build out your SOPs inside of ClickUp. And this is by building out an SOP database. So as you can see, this is actually a templated database that I've created. There's not much in here because I am hoping to share this out as a public template. But essentially what you'll see is that we have this database created as a table view and we will use this area to build out every single SOP 
SOP that our business requires. Now, one of my rules of thumb is to not document every last bit of your business. That's quite overwhelming and I don't think your team will like you for it. However, you do want to focus on the core processes that your team will always use and always have to refer back to. So you have to find the balance and that is definitely a skill and a task in itself. But once you understand the core processes that need to be documented, what you can do is actually create a list for your SOP. So this is a specific list space that I've created. I've housed it within its own folder. So everything stays within its folder. And then essentially what I'm calling this is my core master list. So all of my SOPs can be housed within this particular list. We are going to use a different task. So as you can see, as an example, we already have a task in place. So this is a task referring to human resources. It's um, HR SOP. My name is down as the process owner. So I'm in charge of making sure this stays up to date. And we have a tick box here to say whether it's actually been tested or not. And then we can actually link the SOP in this area as well. So what you're seeing here along the top are actually custom fields. And we're using this to build out an SOP database. So that's exactly how we're using them. And then we actually have the task itself. So if we open up the task, the way you would store your SOP is completely down to how it would work best in your business. You have two options. So this brings us kind of into our second point of using tasks as SOPs as well. So you can build out a list and then you can start to refine it using tasks. So within the task, if you are going to use tasks in ClickUp, one way where you can do this is using the description. The description will allow you to pull in all of the content that is needed for this SOP. So within ClickUp, the, the content that you put in is actually rich text. So that means you can format it, you can make use of headings, highlights, and all sorts of editing features. So this is a great space for you to actually input text of your SOPs. The only issue here is that you have to be mindful not to close this task down. The owner will always have to refer back to this task, but it does keep everything stored inside of ClickUp. What is also good is that each time the task is updated, you'll be able to see when the task was last updated or created. So you'll be able to view the custom fields down in this area as well. So this will show you exactly what the custom fields we have in place. And you'll notice there are some additional fields in this area. So we have a field where it says created, and that's a text box field. And then we also have a field which says whether it's to start in progress or complete. So these are actually hidden from our list view and I'll show you in more detail as to why that is but essentially you can actually house your SOPs within this description area itself. The other way that you can actually build out an SOP within a task itself is by making use of the checklist. So inside of ClickUp, you can build out tasks in any areas, obviously, within ClickUp. It is a project management tool after all. However, what you can do and what is so helpful is that you can actually implement checklists. Now, the checklists are different to subtasks purely because within a subtask, you can actually view your subtasks on the task view level. So you can pull that out into your main list and you can view it on a task view level. Your checklist is slightly different and it works in the sense that these are the steps that need to be done to cross this task off and mark this task down as fully completed. So essentially, every time you create a task, you can use a checklist and you can add in various points. So you can literally add in, I'm just going to say point one, point two, and point three. Now you can assign a person to these checklist points. You can definitely do that. You can rename and you can add a new item. And what you'll notice that you can't do is create a due date. So they are literally the checklist items to just say that this task has been completed. So this is a great way if you have templated tasks inside of ClickUp, this is a great way for you to manage that SOP for that particular task. So if you do tasks on repeat every 
every week, every month, every quarter, and that task populates, then this is a great way for you to make sure the SOP is stored and the instructions are there for your team member to follow every time. Now, there is a caveat in this area is that your team members could actually get a little bit lazy and just try to close the task down without crossing things off. Now, if you do try to do that, ClickUp has a great way of telling you, hold on, you have some unresolved items that need to be checked off. So this again is another great way for you to manage the quality of your work, manage what is actually being completed on your team. And if anyone is essentially closing this down without crossing off the checkpoints, then they need to have a little bit of a talking to. And again, that is something that you will put within your SOPs or your policies. So let's go back to our task list here. So you may be wondering, how on earth do you have these additional status points? Now, this is a task list that is filtered. And so I'm only showing a set views. However, if I go into the main list area within this, you will be able to see that our status points are actually shown differently. So we actually have SOPs that would relate to human resources. Our statuses are then broken down into the various departments or areas of the business. So we have client management, sales, marketing, operations and accounting. So these are the core departments where we will start to build out the SOPs within ClickUp. So what I also want to share with you is a third and final tip on how you can build out SOPs within your business or within ClickUp and that's by using the ClickUp documents. Now, if you are not familiar with ClickUp documents, these can be found at the top inside of the view. You literally go to add a new view and go to doc view. So you'll add a document view and then you can build out kind of like your own internal handbook or operations guide for your team to follow, which is actually really cool. So as you can see here, we have this in place and I call this the process handbook. And again, what I have done is broken down the the different departments of the processes that will be created. So we have HR, client management, sales, marketing, operations. The only one that is missing is accounting. So let's add that in. So as you can see here, as you add in a new page, it adds it under the hierarchy of the process handbook. And then every time you have a new SOP, so let's just call this team onboarding. As an example, you can then build out your documents in this area. So we have one that is called team interviews. So how we manage interviewing for team roles. As you can see here, we have this link into the task. So you can actually use this document. You can input all of the wording, all of the actual process wording for this SOP inside of the Google Doc. You can format it exactly how you need, exactly how your team needs to view it. But then here's something pretty cool. You can link this as a task back to the task list inside of your main master list. And I absolutely love this. So it opens up the original task that we looked at just now. And so everything always interconnects together. This is what I absolutely love about ClickUp. So at this point, you may have a question for me. Well, you may be thinking, Nicola, this looks super cool, but is it actually sensible to store all of my SOPs inside of ClickUp? I'm going to give you my honest and open answer here. Now, if you feel that your team are going to grow and you are really going to scale and ClickUp is your home base for how you manage and run your business, then I definitely recommend keeping your SOPs in one central location. So it makes it much easier for your team to know exactly where to go to get their questions answered and to have your processes updated on an ongoing basis. Now, that being said, there are some businesses who do not feel comfortable to house their SOPs within their budget management tool. And that is absolutely fine. You have to decide what works best for you and your business. So if you are looking for an alternative, then you can definitely look at process specific platforms. Or you can also look at course portal platforms such as Thinkific or Teachable. These are other alternatives that you can use to build out essentially your process library. But for the sake of this video, I really wanted to share with you just how you can actually build and implement your process library within ClickUp so that you can scale down on the amount of platforms and really maximize the use of using ClickUp within your business. 
So if you are interested in how you can use this even more, definitely let me know if this video has been helpful for you and if it's offered you some insights into what you can do within your business. So as we wrap up the video, I just want to share a couple of tips just to round things off. So when it comes to building out SOPs, a lot of business owners think that they have to take this entire job on their shoulders. And I want to encourage you to include your team in this process. Don't feel that you have to know all things and have to create all things. If you have a great team that are working alongside you and have been working with you for some time, the knowledge is already there. It's a case of getting the knowledge from your team members and identifying what it is that they do. So this is a team effort. This does not have to stay on your shoulders completely. And what I will say when it comes to creating SOPs, we may feel that we have to put in all of the details, all of the bells and whistles, every single detail. And that can be more complicated than it needs to be. So keep things simple. Earlier in the video, I talked about core processes. And so we're talking about the processes that you need on a higher level. So for example, if your team member has a project, let's just say they are managing your social media schedule, they may have a core SOP on how they do that. Perhaps they write out the captions, the captions get reviewed, they create a graphic, the graphic gets reviewed, they get sign off, they schedule it. Now, what they wouldn't necessarily do is go through every single detail of what they do unless it's absolutely necessary, i.e. perhaps you have a brand style guide that needs to be followed for your social media, but they would pick out the key actions that actually lead to that task being completed to the same standard every single time. And also what you do want to do is make sure that while you're keeping things simple, have team members test out these new SOPs so that someone else could step in and do that job if for any reason the original team member cannot do that. So those are my power tips for today's video. I hope that this has been super helpful for you. Definitely drop a comment below. Let me know your feedback. I love to hear back from you guys. And it is always me that comes back and responds directly on the channel. So definitely do. If you're thinking that you do need some help systematizing your business, check out my link below. There is a link where you can apply to work with me and my company. And we build out your core processes platforms and ensure that your team and business is up and running like a well-oiled machine. So until next time, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done that already and I will see you guys for our next video. Take care.